Okay, today is Wednesday, September the 22nd, uh, 2021. And um, today I want to talk about um, this book called The Mandibles. And um, before I go any further, I should say that um, I may give out spoilers. So if you do want to read this book, um, you shouldn't watch my video. Um, because yeah there will definitely be spoilers um, but uh, just in in super super brief it's an excellent book I highly recommend it uh, it can get a little dark but it's also super constructive at the end so um, yeah um, and I may not give out the ending the ending ending but um, but yeah um, anyways so um, so I really like this book, The Mandibles. It's um, and it's one of the rare um, fictional books that I have read and that I actually like, um, because I, I typically don't like fictional books. I like, uh, you know, uh, actual historical, psychological, theoretical, uh, behavioral finance, um, historical. Did I say historical? Yeah. But the alternate history, not the BS bogus history that um, that sometimes just gets published, you know. But the the actual stuff that happened sort of behind the scenes, like. Um, and I'm digressing here, but this book I forget the name of the author right now, but uh, it's a book on like the real thing behind World War One. Um, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of that guy but anyways I like that that sort of genre not not really the not really fictional but uh, but this book is is uh, one of the few rare fictionals that I really like so the book man the mandibles by and mandibles like the mandible jaw you know um, that's uh, yeah the mandibles is um, written by uh, someone named by a lady named uh, Lionel Shriver and uh, the story is set in the um, uh, between the years 2029 to 2049 and um, uh, the, the book is mainly about uh, this family uh, white family white American family called uh, you know Mandibles is their last name or Mandible, I guess, is their last name. So the Mandibles, um, and uh, the the I guess the main the protagonist in the uh, the story is a boy who's at the time um, what is he? He's he's nine years old, I think. In the in when the story begins, he's nine years old, and the story begins in twenty twenty nine. I think is he nine or thirteen? Anyway, something like that. So I would say some a kid who's born sort of around now or like a couple of years back. Um, he's the protagonist um, and he is pretty close to, or I perceived it as he's the protagonist. And his name is Willing, Willing Mandible. Hmm, like a willing jaw. That's very interesting. Um, and uh, his mother uh, is, uh, is a single mom by the name of uh, Florence Darkly. Um, the bit about her being a single mom is kind of relevant to the story and the anthropology of the book. Um, her last name is Darkly because um, I think the Mandible last name is from, uh, is it from her mother's side? No, from her father's side. Anyways, but she's... She's one of the Mandible daughters. And um, yeah, I don't know why her last name's Darkly. I think, oh yeah, no, the author says in the book. Uh, I think it's associated with something to do with this uh, white shame business that is going around these days. Um, yeah, but uh, but that's kind of the sense of what I, I got from the book, why she did not uh, keep the Mandible last name, but the Darkly last name. Um, and um, she is uh, living with a Latino man uh, who's her uh, her boyfriend uh, not the not the uh, not the father not the biological father of willing mandible but the, a, a guy that she met um, a guy who she met uh, during the dark ages which was like a blackout slash cyber hacky event type thing that happened um, in 2024 
where all kind of the grid was down and the circuits were taken down and like every every there was like a mass like a not a blackout but I guess like everything went down grid down scenario in 2024 and that's referred to sort of like in the past and uh, uh, there's a there's an international boogeyman um, m- blamed for that 2024 uh, crisis similar to the same boogeyman that is blamed presently with uh, the things we're dealing with right now so I thought that was very interesting too this book came out in I think 2018 or 2019 um, something like that so it was like uh, pre-pandemic times um, but I only began to read the book uh, I think this year I- anyways it's a great book um, so the family is uh, Florence uh, this boyfriend of hers and uh, the son willing um, and sort of their family dynamic and the the, the way they're living in that um, you know, in that 2029 era when, um, like, basically the poop is hitting the fan all around. It kind of hits the fan between 2029 to 2032 um, in that book. And and it hits the fan pretty badly, actually. Um, and, um, and it's really interesting to sort of hear the setup, you know, because... You hear the family dynamic. You hear about how they're taking a bath, sort of in the like with these like uh, <laughs> with these showers that uh, that have such light flow. It's almost like a like a misting of water that they have, and then they washing their uh, dishes with like with like dirty water from like previous days, etc. Because like to conserve water and whatnot. And that's and 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 by the way they you know they are like normal middle class like they're not they're not supposed to be poor but they are they're middle class people and this is how they're living anyways um so that that there's that kind of setup and then um there's the contrast of her uh sister uh, i'm blanking on the name of her sister oh yeah avery avery um something else because she's married to so avery is all this girl florence is a uh florence works in a homeless shelter and um uh, which is also interesting the way that that whole scenario is depicted because it's like this uh this uh, you know this really badly kept homeless shelter but it's in the middle of uh, like downtown Manhattan like you know like a ridiculously expensive real estate uh, price but um, like kept in such squalor and like kept really poorly I think it really the the, the whole book kind of uh, shows sort of you know socialism gone dark and or not gone dark the the natural consequence I would say of where socialistic communistic type of policies lead it just shows that natural consequence it even shows a lot of the natural consequences of you know where 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 communities and where societies go when you unnecessarily like shame a privileged race i would say um because i feel like you know yeah sure as a, as a, even a, you know as an indian woman i could uh, stand to benefit from the whole you know i'm a brown woman narrative but I, I think um, that reverse thing of like, uh, you know, like uh, shaming white people, Americans, etc. It's just, that's also racism. I think, I think that's, uh, that's something that people don't uh, think about, uh, you know, they don't think it through. That, hey, wait a second, what are you doing? Are you doing the, the oppressed becomes the oppressor now? Like, is that what you, where you're going? Um, anyways, I could like go off on a full-on soapbox about that bit, so I won't go there. Um, sticking with this book, so the professions of the people, uh, Florence uh, Darkly has a, is a, is a it works at a homeless shelter. The other girl, the, her sister Avery, um, is a psychologist and has a private practice and is married to a guy who's a uh, economics professor at a university 
and so he has like uh, what you call uh, you know so called t- tenured uh, job and i say so called because even that kind of comes into question and becomes a big old thing um this is where i said sort of the spoilers you know cuz tenure doesn't become tenure anymore his tenure is gone uh like in 2023 um when like a different nation basically becomes the number one and uh the people are like not outsourcing their jobs to the united states but it's getting pretty bad um anyway so yeah so that's the the other that's the other family so the kind of there's a family dynamic contrast there between um florence florence's uh, uh single mom uh one child family um and uh avery and her husband and their three children who go to private school and um the three children also i have to say the names of those three kids are pretty interesting she has one girl and two boys the one girl the daughter's name is savanna but the two boys uh, their names are gug and bing and i thought that was very interesting you know google and bing what not um in case that needed to be specified but i thought that was very interesting that that they kind of they you know they took that that um, that angle on the boys's names um anyways and then um and then uh, they have they have a latino president at that time and this latino president is not an american born person he's a, he's from somewhere else i don't know which country he's from which like south american countries from specifically i forgot but um apparently that was a whole like move to like change the um uh, change the policy of like to be and to be a president you need to be a born citizen not a naturalized citizen and uh, apparently they put, they put they brought in Arnold Schwarzenegger into the mix too with that whole thing in that um, in that part of the book where um uh, apparently uh, Schwarzenegger runs for president and but then he he doesn't win or he loses out or something or or he wins and he stops or whatever something but the basically the point is the law was changed for him to become president but then that did not work out and now they have this guy and uh, you know there's the whole the bs about like gold confiscation again and then in all this mix there is an aunt who is living in um France who who remigrates back to the states and she's like the only one who's i think doing really well and i think that's like that's like the core spoiler <laughs> yeah, and i i won't i won't go into all of it but uh, quite a bit of it is the fact that uh, like um she um you know she works out every day she just like 3000 push ups so there's uh, jumping jacks or something she does that every day um she dresses like crap but she keeps her mind sharp and she keeps her body sharp and i think those two are very important things and she's a, like a once upon a time famous author who had like a one, one hit wonder type of author basically and um she the i think the key is what she did with her with her royalty proceeds and with her savings and um and i think that 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 key spoiler i won't reveal that because but that's the hopeful message in this book that is revealed at the very very end at like 20 2049 you know after the whole saga of their lives after everybody's like and they actually you know like i know there's a whole thing about like oh my god i don't want to get microchipped but in that uh, in that uh, book they actually talk about how everybody has like a chip or whatever that they put in the in the in the back of their neck you know the base of the uh, base of the brain basically they implant something that doesn't kill you but basically it it has all your financial transactions recorded right there and uh, the way they incentivized parents to do it to start off with was um 
they they put a sum of money on that like a baby bond is what they called it and they 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 uh, gave the ch- the parents that as an incentive that you know when when your kid is born like you get a deposit of like whatever 10000 um, dollars or whatever the currency is because oh yeah there's another there's a massive currency collapse that happens between 2029 and 2032 33 there's a mass like uh, winding up of all the policies of all this like um, not social security but like um medical medical type of things is like more um uh, there are more um um uh, there are more sort of restrictions put on that and on like aged care and that sort of thing and um a lot of um a, a lot of families sort of become you know very, like they're living like three four generations in one house neighbors and other people also like everybody piles into Florence's house basically in that story and um it's um yeah it it is it's it's a it's a fascinating story it's a very um uh, yeah i don't know what to say i know this video has become already very long so um so I'll probably stop here but it's a really good book it's a very um instructive book there are a lot of different characters in that book in the sense that if you're the sort of person who likes to identify with one particular character and you know like oh I'm like this person and then you anchor to that um there are a lot of different characters in this book that um um that a wide range of people would very easily find and find some person to identify with um and and some um some lesson to learn uh one way you know one way or the other um because oh yeah even that that economics professor he has like colleagues at his university there are some characters there too that you could identify with because those are also very interesting people about how they live their lives and how they come about um you know not not necessarily being successful but like not saying a sociopathic is successful i think but um anyways um yeah so there's there's a lot in that book and it's a fascinating book and i highly recommend it and i think you'll definitely learn something from it and if if you don't like dark stuff and you only want happy and you only want the lesson um and you know you're of the mindset that hey you know the world's going to fall to shit anyways i don't need to know how it falls to shit just give me the lesson and i'm okay with that like you 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 don't want the rest of it then i would say read the last chapter read just the last chapter and um and do what that woman the author i forgot her name right now the aunt basically the french the aunt who moves here from france what's her name darn it oh yeah her name is um because it's alone it's alone spelled backwards uh no no enola enola is her name enola mandible just do exactly what enola mandible does um physically healthwise and financially and you will be just fine okay thank you for listening bye